Hi, this is Vivian Vandeveld. I want to thank teacher Catherine Ross, a teacher of third grade at Taylor Elementary in Arlington, Virginia, who in this time of at-home learning has been reading Three Good Deeds to her students. Her students came up with a bunch of questions and I am here to answer those for you. Okay, the first question, a couple of you asked in, in different ways, how did I come up with the uh, idea or the plot for Three Good Deeds? My husband and I like to walk, and one of the places that we walk is an area near our house where there are ponds, and by the ponds there are geese. The geese are fine most of the time, but in the spring when they are having little baby um, goslings, the parents become very protective. It is as though they suspect that my husband and I are planning to run off with their kiddos. So they are standing guard. And if we come what they consider to be too close, they First of all, they're staring at us. They're going like that. Well, not with their, not with their wings, but that eye thing. And they are um, hissing. And if we do not move away, they do this head bob kind of thing. And the next stage after that would be that they would attack. Now a geese, a goose, when when you're looking at it in the water, it looks kind of small and friendly and pretty. When a goose has its wings extended and it's rushing at you, it does not look friendly at all. Um, so I was kind of interested in the geese and I did some research about geese and I thought that they were kind of interesting. I, I learned about those stages of, of escalation. We had never seen the uh, attack phase. And, and did not care to. Um, also learned that they molt their feathers so that they cannot fly away while they are uh, tending their babies. That's kind of Mother Nature's way of ensuring that they that they stay close by. And, and I thought all these things were interesting, but even though I wanted to share them, I am not a nonfiction writer. I write stories. So I decided that I wanted to write a story, and I decided that I would have a misbehaving boy turned into a goose um, so that he would not be turned back until he did three good deeds. And of course, it's harder to do good deeds when you are, excuse me, in fact, a goose, and nobody except the other geese can understand what you're saying to everybody else. It sounds like honk and um, that you have wings in, instead of hands. So it makes, makes things even, even more difficult. Um, I was asked uh, why a witch and not a wizard. I don't know. It, it never occurred to me to, to do a wizard. Witches are notoriously cranky. Um, and in a lot of fairy tales, there are three, either sons or three daughters, um, and the older two are always misbehaving and very often um, not helping an old woman who asks for help, who turns out to be a witch, and then she puts a spell on them and does a spell to reward the youngest. Um, that doesn't happen so much with wizards. Uh, I was also asked, how old is the old witch? <gasps> you never ask a lady her age, even if that lady is a witch. I would say she's very, very old. Um, why didn't the wish, witch turn Roscoe and his friend into geese? Um, the witch has kind of guessed or assumed that how, <coughs> excuse me, that Howard is the ringleader. He is 
kind of the brains uh, compared to the other two of the operation. And, and he's the one that she wants to teach a lesson to. By the way, another of the questions was, how did I come up with the name Howard? Um, I have a friend who is a librarian um, at one of the Spencerport schools. Spencerport is, is a town that is uh, very near to where I live. It was not our school district, but I, I knew the, uh, the librarian there and, and he called himself Howard the Loud Librarian because he was more into uh, having fun and having the kids at his school have fun than in the um, traditional that uh, librarians are usually accused of, of being. Um, the, the question was, was there a reason, and this is a spoiler for anybody who hasn't read um, Three Good Deeds, so if you haven't, cover your ears uh, for this question. I will signal when, when it's okay for you to listen. Uh, but for those of you at uh, a Taylor who, who have read the story, you know that the old witch dies at the end. And the question is, why did I have her die? I wanted to put Howard in a very bad situation where there is no possibility that the witch will take pity on him um, and, and rescue him from the spell no possibility that he would do three good deeds in time um, for her to, uh, as is what she had said, um, to do three good deeds and then she would release him from, from the spell. I wanted to go one step beyond as awful as that situation was and have it look as though there was absolutely no way that he would ever turn back into a little boy. Okay, the rest of you can come back. Um, what is my favorite part of Three Good Deeds? Um, I, I had a lot of fun naming the geese. Um, obviously, I didn't want um, the kinds of names that um, you would find in a schoolroom or in a neighborhood, you know, so I didn't want any... Uh, um, Tiffany's or Emily's or Cody or uh, Sam. I wanted to make up names and the names kind of reflect who they are in a very goose-like kind of way. Uh, I was asked where generally do I get my inspiration and despite the fact that almost all of my stories are fantasies as, as this one is, a lot of times it starts with something real. So in this case, by observing the geese and wanting to write about the geese, um, sometimes it will be something that I've overheard or something that I see, an interaction between a couple of people or a question that I've been thinking about. But most often, despite the fact that there are witches and magic and uh, magical creatures in my stories, a lot of times the inspiration, the, the tiny little seed that the story starts from is something real that happened to me or that I saw happening. I don't take um, inspiration necessarily from other books because I don't want to be um, inadvertently copying any books, um, but so from, from real life. And um, let's see, I was asked which is which are my favorite books that I've written. That again, that that is a question um, that I'm not totally willing to answer because it's like asking a mother which of your children is your favorite child. Um, with each book, I've spent a lot of time writing it, um, sometimes doing research, uh, always doing many many revisions then I send it to a publishing house. Um, sometimes it gets sent back to me that the uh, editors or the publishers don't want the story. Uh, in the case of Three Good Deeds, I sent it out one time and, and my editor, who was my usual editor, uh, accepted it. Um, but once he read the story, he, like Miss Rossi, wanted to make sure that 
what he was reading was the best that it could be. So just as Miss Rossi probably has times that when you turn in a paper, she will ask you questions like, is this the best place to start? Uh, could you have a little bit more description? Could you have a little bit less description and get to the point? Um, could you have a little bit of um, uh, tension in the story or conflict in the story? Because if it's a story where everything is going along fine, then then people aren't going to be interested in, in reading it. Um, so once the editor reads the story, he comes back or she with comments and suggestions and I will read those and a lot of times when an editor makes a suggestion I say hmm I don't like that suggestion exactly the way it is but I can see how he had a problem with the way I had written it so then I have to come up with yet another way to do it that will satisfy both him and me because the purpose of an editor or a teacher is to make your writing be good for other people. If you're writing just for yourself, you don't need a teacher, you don't need an editor, you know exactly what you mean. But once you start wanting to share with other people, then they start saying things like, I don't understand this, or they might say, oh, okay, I'm a little bit bored by that. And you have to fix those problems if you want other people to be reading it. Um, so I do that with each of my stories and then I will start working on a totally different story, different set of characters, different problems, and I get all excited by that. So I'm going to say that I really like my funny stories, um, but my favorite story, which was kind of a funny story, uh, is A Hidden Magic. And the reason that it's my favorite is it was the first story that I wrote it was the first story that I got accepted to be published. So that happened in 1984. Um, that it, I, I started it in 79. It finally got published in 84 after uh, getting a lot of rejections. Um, and it, it also took me a while to write it because it was the first story that I wrote. wrote. Um, if I was writing it today, I would do things a little bit differently. I think the story starts a little bit slowly. I think the funny parts could have been funnier. The places where you're worried for the characters, I think I could have made you feel more tension. Um, so I don't think that it's the best written of my stories. Um, if I had not learned anything in the, say, starting in 80 and going to uh, nine, 1980 and going to um, 2020, that's 40 years. If I had not learned anything in uh, those years about writing, uh, if I was staying at the same place, I'd, I'd be a pretty poor writer. So I think I've learned more tricks about how to engage you quickly and how to make you laugh more. Um, so, so a hidden magic is not the best written of my books, but it is perhaps my favorite because it proved to me that I could sit down, write a story from beginning, keep on working through problems that I was having with what should happen next, that I could keep sending it out to different publishers, even though I was getting told no, um, and finally get it published. Um, but I am glad that you read uh, Three Good Deeds. I'm hoping that you enjoyed the story. Um, and I want to thank you. I want to thank Miss Rossi. And I want to wish you all a safe uh, summer and uh, ask you to be kind to one another. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>